We're going to look at the United Nations Treaty. The United Nations Treaty that uh, President Obama says he's planning to sign and that they plan to try to implement even if Congress does not ratify it. People say, hey, that's the UN. What they do doesn't matter to us. Really, we've had the Congress uh, basically lay down the fact that they've been told that the UN and NATO gives our military orders. And if you missed that clip, uh, they've done it twice, the House and Senate Armed Services Committee in the last five months. First time five months ago, last time three months ago, and of course last year with the Libya bombardment, Obama uh, in letters he sent to Congress said, you are not involved, sit down and shut up. We've got at least four of the five Supreme Court justices who have been coming out and saying that they take their orders from the UN and that we should follow UN law. So I wanna talk some about the United Nations today, uh, not just about this treaty. And we're going to be going over all of that. But even Forbes in articles that have been put out has had to admit that this will at bare minimum put the UN over gun registration here in the United States. Uh, then I wanna get into the proliferation of drones because now people are finally paying attention to this because it's gonna be drone taxis, drone cars, drone submarines, drone ships, drone air, air, air aircraft, drone spacecraft, it, it already is. And they're going to come out, the system's already saying this, I told you this a decade ago, and say humans aren't safe, humans are bad, and make you drive a robot car. At first, they'll just be a lot higher insurance if you want to drive yourself, but over time, they are going to end up restricting it. This is how the nanny state operates. This is how the nanny state mentality works. So I'm going to talk about the rise of the robot technocracy in the second half of the second hour. So in about an hour and a half from now, when we come back, I'm going to also give the number out for your take, your view uh, on the United Nations Treaty. Guys, I meant to have the... Um, Forbes article that where it broke down the sections, because I have the sections, I have Aaron's breakdown of it at InfoWars.com, but there's another article. It's the one that's actually linked right there. It's the first link in that article. That's the one I want, no, not this one. There you go. Print that one for me. That's the one where even Forbes analysis with their lawyers says it will have the UN register guns and it's got little statements in there, and Aaron Dykes has got it in his video. In fact, I'm going to have Aaron, he, he, we produced the videos this week, posted them yesterday. I'm going to have him repost them as red links, my analysis, his analysis, up at the top of InfoWars.com. It's already scrolled off into the Featured News Archive. That little bitty link, Featured News Archive, is so important. There's also the Top Stories link at the top and the red link, Breaking News. Those are both key links at InfoWars.com to click. So we're going to be going over all of that and a lot of other financial news. Uh, it really hit me like a ton of bricks as well this morning when I saw the Red Dirt report that I'm going to get Aaron to post with John DeCamp, who we've had on many times for the Franklin cover-up. I forgot about 10 years ago on my show, he started getting into Penn State because it had never been proven in court. I was like, whoa, 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 let's not go there. I'd forgotten about that, but he called it. Do you understand how dark it is? How far down the line we are? How late it is? And the first video I want to go to here today is a short clip from ABC News. But there are more than 20 of these clips online from PBS, CBS, NBC, CNN. Just type in gun confiscation Katrina. And there's documentaries online by the NRA. We're all over the state. Uh, the feds led by the army uh, would show up in high and dry areas and take people's firearms in rural areas, you name it. And the reason I'm gonna go to this video here in just a few minutes is because Obama 
had 50 plus senators send him a letter last year, over 100 members of the House of Representatives as well, saying do not sign the UN small arms ban treaty. Do not sign it. And Obama has said he is going to sign it, but worse than that, he has said that he intends to try to implement it outside of congressional approval. And we see this over and over and over again, where Congress won't pass the global Kyoto carbon tax. And so Obama implements it and shuts down power plants, not owned by General Electric, gives them a waiver. We see this uh, over and over and over again. Now, continuing uh, here, ladies and gentlemen, even Forbes in its analysis, even mainline establishment Forbes says UN agreement should have all American gun owners up in arms. It may not come as a surprise news to many of you, the United Nations doesn't approve of your second amendment. Not one bit, and they very much hope to do something about it with help from some powerful American friends under the guise of a proposed global small arms treaty premised to fight terrorism, insurgency, that means resisting tyrannical government, and international crime syndicates, you mean like the ones the big mega banks run? And what exactly does that intended agreement entail? Globally, Nations agree to enact tougher licensing requirements, creating additional bureaucratic red tape for legal firearms owners. Well, yeah, what's the UN involved in our laws for? Confiscate and destroy all unauthorized civilian firearms, exempting those owned by government, of course. Ban the trade, sale, and private ownership of all semi-automatic weapons. It states this. Create an international gun registry, clearly setting the stage for full-scale gun confiscation. In short, overriding our national sovereignty, it goes on. Now, now here's the deal. They've added a line in there now, and Aaron Dykes has this in his uh, big report on this. Emergency alert, UN set to ban civilian gun ownership. Red link to the top of Infowars.com right now. Where they say that this will not abridge any domestic laws. But it goes on to state that the countries agree to implement what the UN policies are. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you read the UN Universal Declaration of Human Rights, there's 30 articles in it. And when you get up to the last two articles, there's all these wonderful rights in there. Basically a right to somebody else's money, a right to communism, a right to socialism, you know, all these great rights, a free lunch basically, which, which the UN never gives you. But the last two parts, you can look this up for yourself. I mean, take notes, ladies and gentlemen, says, this is the big UN Charter on Human Rights, their, their big official law that it's all based on, freedom and all that jazz they claim. Of course, Stalin claimed it was all about freedom. So did Hitler, so did Mao, so did uh, every other thug. And it says right there that if something goes against the UN, it's null and void, or if the United Nations says so at any time, any of these rights are null and void. So it's kind of like a contract that says, you get all these great things, but we can take it away any time we want. It's not inalienable. It's not unalienable. It's not in concrete. Now, now, before I get into all this, I just want to say something here. And later in the week, I'm going to have a whole report. We're going to produce this week. It'll probably be ready by Friday. We've only got a few weeks on this. Obama's saying he may sign it. Uh, next month. We're going to produce a report going back over all the gun confiscation, the hundreds of countries that registered guns, then always ban them, then engage in mass murder, the UN going into Rwanda and other areas and registering, then confiscating guns of one group, and then having the other group exterminate them as the UN helped. And the UN, even in the New York Times last year, admittedly, uh, murdering people for their property in Uganda and Honduras. I mean, look it up. The UN is a murder force, but they have PR ads and little kids with tin cans for UNICEF and fancy PR. But the Soviets, when they poured into your country, had similar, you know, PR, you know, showing the Soviet there to help you, but that's not what happened. But all of that aside, 
We're going to have the quotes. You can look them up of Supreme Court justices saying four of the current sitting have said we should be under UN law and that they are going to start ruling according to UN law, that that's going to be their precedent. I mean, this is some scary stuff, ladies and gentlemen. Who created the UN? A bunch of mega bankers, robber barons, who were anti-free market monopoly men, Rockefellers, Rothschilds, Carnegies. Look it up. They bragged it would be this consortium they set up to have countries shine over their rights to. It's a criminal murder gang. It's a joke how incredibly evil it is and, and the atrocities committed by the UN armies all over the world. Look it up. I mean, they are known as the most vicious, disgusting, murderous, child kidnapping, sex trade, white slavery, mass murder crew you could imagine. The UN is so corrupt, it'll blow your mind. They've got diplomatic immunity. They engage in narcotics trafficking, money for oil, backroom scams. But I'm digressing. Just type into a search engine and you'll see his speeches. I mean, I can play the clips here right now, but I never have time to be on the radio, where the attorney general met with the TV heads and said, we need to brainwash the public to be anti-gun, anti-Second Amendment. Just type in attorney general Holder says brainwash people against guns. You'll see the video clip. Don't have time to play them all. We may, though. Actually, cue that up. I can't help it. I'll just never get to calls if I do this. He wrote as deputy attorney general that he wants all civilian guns banned. The UN said in their UNADIR UN Treaty version, July 7th ratified at the UN in New York City, where the Rockefeller properties based, where they gave them the land, in, night, in, in 2001, July 7th, quote, Civ civilian ownership of firearms threatens the legitimate power monopoly of the state. Look it up. We're going to put a whole special report together for you. We've got one coming up that Aaron did, but it just gets into you know the current rhetoric of the UN. We're going to go deep on this, okay? He, Holder says ban your guns. Obama, as a state senator, said ban guns completely. And, and here's the big one. Anywhere they're in control, Chicago, New York, and other globalist mafia-controlled big city crime syndicates, uh, is there a Second Amendment? No, zero. Zero, zero. All the rich billionaires have got details of 10, 20 guys with submachine guns specially licensed by the city. In New York, with more than 10 million people, there's less than a thousand gun permits issued, and it's all to bodyguards for billionaires. Oh, guess who gets one in San Francisco? Guess who gets one when she's in New York? Diane Feinstein and Barbara Boxer both get special permits for semi autos. Again, they have guns, you don't. They live behind armored walls, you don't. And then you die in Chicago because the criminals don't follow the law. The point is, these people have all said, Sarah Brady has said on the floor of the House in 93, they want a total gun ban. Total gun ban. That's what they want. That's what they want. Ask yourselves, what are you doing in this time of great challenge? What are you doing to unlock mine?